In this episode, I'm gonna show how you can completely remove reflections on flooring by taking this example and turning it into this, but I'm also gonna show how you can greatly reduce reflections on flooring by taking this example, turning it into this, and that way you've got more than one option to apply to what degree you feel is necessary for this type of repair. So let's start with the second example first so that we can see how you can greatly reduce reflections on flooring. Now this was the finished delivered image and a little bit of reflection on the flooring is completely acceptable. It does make it look natural. Removing it completely does have its place and in that first example, we're gonna remove that because it was quite distracting. But here to greatly reduce it, we can see what happened. This was the ambient shot and there's just a lot of glare that was coming in here. Now, to really reduce this, the only way you're really going to, in this kind of example, in this case, to really get rid of that, you're gonna to have to incorporate some type of flash. Now, you can see here, when I started incorporating flash, immediately, then, a lot of this went away. A lot of that glare went away because I'm using a higher shutter speed. But, of course, then, I had to incorporate more flash, so I've got a flash over in here. I'm doing a two-sided composite, and then, also, I decided to light this a little bit more. You can see I'm using a shoot through umbrella there. And these are things, these are techniques that are using that flambient technique. You've seen me show this a lot here on this channel. And if you have my courses, my books, you know this is applied with just using some simple flash, but you get then a much higher quality uh, image to work with. And then you can do things like get rid of these ambient artifacts that would normally be coming through in cases like this. You don't have to worry about trying to blend this with HDR. So that's the first step that you really should take is if you you can and you're seeing a lot of glare in a lot of photos that you're doing, if you're doing HDR, you're going to constantly battle that. So consider using flash. And by the way, if you're not familiar with my courses and books, I've got links to that down in the description for this video and in particular on how to light this. That's with my course on professional interior photography. So that's your first step to be able to reduce this a lot. The next step though is where we can even apply it to this image if we want to but it's really gonna be a matter of reducing or also completely removing that nasty flash reflection that's in this image. So no matter what I did here with using flash, I just couldn't get rid of all of it. If we take a look down here at the flash shot, you can see here I'm using a fairly high shutter speed like I normally would and I'm doing all my flashing, but no matter what I do, I just can't get rid of it. So when I have my finished image here, this just, it is natural, but it just doesn't look very good. It's something I would like to remove. Besides that, when I finally got around to doing the property video, just a, about 30 or 45 minutes later, after I had shot this downstairs, there was no reflection because the sun had gone down far enough. So I didn't wanna just reshoot this, so instead I can fix this. So the fix is actually fairly simple. So after greatly reducing this amount of glare and this reflection that's coming off the floor, by using flash, the next step is to then try to fill this, but we don't have to completely remove it. The step that I'm gonna take here is gonna turn it into this image here. And there was some other virtual staging here that the client paid me for. But what we're gonna do is use a little bit of generative fill, but we have to be careful on how we do that. First, let's take an overview of what we're going to do to do this generative fill. Let's zoom in just a little bit on this so we can see just this area of flooring. What I'm gonna do then is at the very top of all my other adjustment layers and things I was doing to get this image to work very well is I'm gonna use the polygon lasso tool. With that then, I'm going to draw a polygon just outside of that reflection. Now you wanna have some type of overlap in this so it has a good sample area. This is a bit of a problem though for the size of this. I'm gonna show that here in a second. But the basic repair on this would be to then go to edit and then to generative fill and then don't type anything and just click generate. And it will go out to the cloud and it will start generating and it could take about a minute or so for this to figure it out. But once it does, you can see we've got that area filled in. So it did a pretty good job there and there's a three different selections we can choose from. And let's say that this one looked more natural than these other ones. It's up to you to decide which ones you wanna choose. 
But the problem here when we do that is when we zoom in is that we're going to see that it's not as sharp as the rest of the surrounding. So if we go in 100%, we can see that the corner of the rug here is just a little bit of soft. It's softer definitely than the table over here and softer also than things that are in the distance. And the reason for that is that we're only limited to really getting sharp images at a 1024 square. So you've probably seen me do this in other videos where I did AI fill using segments of 1024. And to just recap, what you would do is instead of using the polygon tool, you would select with the rectangular marquee tool, use its style as fixed size, and then you would set its width and height to 1024 by 1024. Now when I select an area, if we turn this off, and I select this area here, you can see that it's not going to get that entire area. So I could do this in segments and it would help. But in this case, it's not like it's the entire image, it's just a portion of the flooring. Having it tack sharp really isn't that necessary. But let's say that we did like the fill that was done here with our layer generative fill but we wanted to have something more natural and just reduce it. Well, that's actually really easy. All we need to do is reduce the layer opacity of that generative fill layer down to where we like it. So here that's at 63% and I can then use the slider here for how much I want to bring in. So I'm in control of how much of that glare or that reflection is there. I could also, if I wanted to, I could take the opacity of this all the way back up to 100%. And then I could put another layer mask on this by going to group from layers. And I'll just call this group one. I'll just leave it as default. Then I can add a layer mask onto this and I'll go up to the menu. I like to do it this way, just out of habit. I'm going to go up to layer, layer mask, and then I'm going to go to reveal all. Now I can take the eraser tool and I can use, let's say a 30% flow. I'll use a pretty good size eraser. And let's say that I want just a little bit over here. So what I'm going to do, you see, I'm going to erase some of that. So it comes across on the floor, but I'm not getting entirely then everything that was there. So you can see that's the whole shebang right there. And this is me just adding in a little bit of those sunbeams. Now in this case, it still isn't all that great of a reflection. It does nothing to really accent this room. So I would definitely just have that completely hidden. But if we were to go back and take a look at what ambient light would have done for us, this would have been completely blown out. That's a real hard reflection and there is no information down in there at all to gather to fix that. So by incorporating flash, which you can see then I started doing here, it's greatly reduced because I'm able to increase my shutter speed. I'm able to then do these two-sided composites like you've seen me do a lot of times. And once again, they're in my books and courses. Once I have that and maybe some adding some darkened mode window poles into here, then I'm able to get something that is workable in Photoshop as I'm layering this together. And then by using generative fill, I can then decide to just remove all of it or I could just bring in some of it if I want to. It's all to my discretion on how much I want this to come through. And once again, by changing the opacity overall, I can leave a little bit in there compared to where if I didn't have that at all, then of course it would be completely removed. And if I didn't have that repair layer, we'd have a very harsh reflection.